you will rise again. Thank you for that response. And indeed, you will rise again in the mighty name of Jesus. You know, for each and every one of us as human, it's normal, it's natural for us to have desire. Every one of us have desire. We all have desire. We have a desire, we have a goal that we set for ourselves. Some of us set goals for our, ourselves in the area of our family that by the a time frame that something will happen. Some of us have desire to get married. Some of us have desire to go back to school. Some of us have desire to make more money. Some of us have desire to start a business. And for those that already have business, they have desire for that business to grow to the next level. But one thing or the other, when we have desire, we match our desire with go with time. We have a time frame that we've set that, okay, uh, come January, each and every one of us have a resolution. Some of us, our desire is to lose 20 pounds by December. But lo and behold, this is the penultimate month in the year 2018, and it seems as if those goals are not marched. You know, the Bible says in the book of Isaiah 55, verse 8, I believe, it says God's mindset is not our own mindset. God has a timetable. He has a plan and a good will for each and every one of us. But the truth of the matter is that many times our goal that we set for ourselves, they do not match with God's goal for us. And when things like that happen, what happened is that the tongue, the, 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 the syllable, the thought process, what comes out of our mouth changes. You know, many of us will say, well, maybe it's not God's will for me. Maybe that's not what God plans for me. You know, I know what it is to hope and to hope and hope and to hope and that hope being deferred. The scripture says hope deferred makes the heart sick. So there is a way by which in January you believe in God for something. In March you brought it to God's attention. In August you brought it up again. This is November. It has not happened. And there is a way by which you can make your heart sick. And it can make you to forget about that goal that you have for your life. But what I stand here and what God has for you this morning is that you will rise again in the mighty name of Jesus. That hope that you had in January, that you set and you aspire that by now will have been fulfilled, the almighty God will make it come to pass in the mighty name of Jesus. But one thing I know is that even though God has a plan for you, even though you have your plan yourself, but once those aspirations have not been met, there is a way by which you can get to an impossibility mentality. But you find out that somebody that has an impossibility mentality can never receive anything from God. And that's the place where the devil wants to put and to box us. We come to a place in our lives where we feel like, well, maybe this is God's lot for me. And then God, the devil wants you to start thinking negatively about yourself. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23. I will paraphrase that your thoughts runs your life. Your thoughts runs your life. Your thought process runs your life. What you think, it says, keep your heart with all diligence for out of it is the issues of life. Another translation says, guard your heart. Guard, guard. Do all you can to protect your heart. Do all you can because your heart put a filter of what the devil lets go into your heart. Because out of your heart is the wellspring spring of life. The other scripture says, as a man thinking in his heart, so is he. What is the thought process that you have? Yes, you are in the 11th month of the year 2018. What is your thought process? Is your thought process still the same way? Are you still excited? Are you still zealous about those dreams and those aspirations, those aspirations as you were in January, Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Romans 12, verse 2 also alluded to this. It says, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Brothers and sisters, nothing will change until your mindset is changed. Nothing will change in the positive way until you change your mindset. And that's why God is saying that renew your mind and that you may be proved what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God for your life. So let me quickly talk about these things that there are many a times we think, four basic things that we think about for those of us who are believers, number one, we think about God. You wonder what is God's thought process towards me. You wonder what is your relationship with him. What is the mind of God towards your goal and towards what you want to aspire to be. And then you look into his word, which is the scripture, to match what God says concerning your request, concerning your aspiration. Many times we think about ourselves as well. You think about how am I doing in life? 
How well am I doing? Am I progressing or am I regressing? Am I making any positive move towards my feeling? And then you talk about what are your feelings? What are your feelings? What are your feelings? How are your emotions? And also we think about other people. For those of us who are parents, we think about our children. For those of us who are married, we think about our spouses. We think about our career. We think about our job. And also we think about other issues of life. It's important to have a healthy thought in all aspects of life. As you think about God, as you think about your relationship with God, it's important that it's good that you have a healthy and a good thought about God. As you think about yourself, it's very key that you have a good thought about yourself. As you think about your career, your business, your children, your husband, irrespective of the circumstances of life, it's very key that you have a good thought. So this morning, we're going to use the story of a man that has a negative thought about himself. And we see how God brought about change in his life by changing the way he thinks to where God wants him to be. I stand here this morning to let you know that your hope will rise again. That which God has for you, you will actually palpate it, you will feel it, you will touch it, you will sense it, and you will experience it in the mighty name of Jesus. So if you can please quickly turn with me to the book of Judges chapter 6. Judges chapter 6, we want to read the story of a man called Gideon. We read verses 1 through 6 and then we jump to verse 11. Judges chapter 6, I believe many of us who've been in church for a while, we know about the story of this man. The Bible says, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. And for seven years he gave them into the hands of the Midianites. Because the power of Midian was so oppressive, the Israelites prepared shelters for themselves in mountains, clefts, claves, and strongholds. Whenever the Israelites planted their crops, the Midianites, Amalekites, and other eastern people invaded the country. They camped on the land and ruined the crops all the way to Gaza and did not spare a living thing for Israel, neither sheep nor cattle nor donkeys. They came up with their livestock and their tents like swans of locusts. It was impossible to count them of their camels. They invented the land to ravage it. Hmm. Midian so improvised the Israelites that they cried out to the Lord for help. Let's jump to verse 11. Verse 11 says, now this is the man that God was going to use to liberate the whole nation of Israel. The angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak of Ophrah that belonged to Joash the Abrazite where his son Gideon was threshing with in a wine press to keep it from the Midianites. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Pardon me, my Lord, Gideon replied. But if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? And I know that's the situation, that's, the, that's, the, that's, the, that's what is the syllable of somebody else. That if God is with me, how come situation still remains the same? If God is with me, how come I'm still in this predicament? But look at what the Lord says, verse 14. The Lord turned to him and said, go in the strength you have and set Israel out of Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? Pardon me, my Lord, Gideon replied. But how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh. I'm the least in my family. The Lord answered, I will be with you. And I pray this morning the Lord will be with you. And you will strike down all the Midianites, leaving none alone. That will be your testimony in the mighty name of Jesus. From this story, I just want us to pick up four things and then I'll go back to my seat. Number one, impossibility thinking imprisons people. When you have the negative mindset, it imprisons you. It's like he puts you in a prison. He cages you. He doesn't let you see the extent of what God has for you. When you have this mindset, look at the mindset of Gideon. He has the impossibility thinking. Even when God told him, I'm going to liberate you and your people. He said, God, how can this happen? When I'm the, my clan is the least in the nation of Israel. And I'm the least even in the, in the, in the, in the Manasseh clan. And I'm the least. Because of the, 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 the oppression of Israel. When living, they were living in caves and in mountains. Even when the angel met Gideon, the Bible says he was crushing with in the wine press. He was living in a cave, living in fear. And brothers and sisters, many of us are living in a cave. What is a cave? A cave is something like a prison. A cave is something like a bondage. A cave is something like being in a place of darkness. You are in darkness. You don't know the way out. You don't know whether to go forward, whether you go back, whether to go left or whether to go right. A cave is like a place of secrecy. It's like you are living in secret. It's like you are not able to explore the maximum of what God has for you. A place is a place of basic survival. 
You are just surviving. You are just surviving. That's not the plan and purpose of God for you. Jesus Christ said in the book of John chapter 10 verse 10. He said, I have come that you may have life. Not just have an ordinary life, but you may have a life that is rich, that is robust. That you may have an abundance. But what God has said is not what you see in your life. It's like you are in, in a cave. It's like you are living in secret. It's like you are living in isolation. It's like you are aching out of life. The life of abundance that God has promised you, you cannot lay your hands on it. Then you can really say that you are in a situation like Gideon and the children of Israel. So Gideon's mindset, he says, his mindset was the cave mentality mindset. Says, All of his hope has been eroded. That he couldn't hope again. He couldn't believe again. He could not trust again. And I know some of us in this situation were in a cave situation. You are, you are saying that I will never get out of this situation. Many of us are struggling with addiction. Many of us are addicted. When you talk about addiction, people always think you're talking about addicted to drugs or to alcohol. Many of us are addicted even to sweet things. You set the goal in January, you want to lose 20 pounds. But you did well until February. March, April, you went back to your sweet tooth. It's an addiction. And you find that as long as you have it, no matter how much you pray, no matter how much VG you have, if you do not change what goes in, your weight will never come down. So addiction can be as simple as that. So many of us are frustrated with that. You say, well, I will never get out of this. Many of us are saying we'll never be able to get married. Maybe it's my lot in life. You are the age where you need to be married. And it seems the man is not coming or the lady is not showing up. Men also have delay as well. So when you talk about delay in marriage, it does not apply only to women. I know men who are the marriageable age, but they are still single for reasons best known to them. But that's not where we are going today. So it can be a bondage as well. Many of us have immigration issues that we are trusting and believing in God for. And this is November. Things are still status quo. As it was in January, so it is in November. And you feel like you are caged in. But God is saying he's going to set you free. You are, can be imprisoned. So many things can imprison us. So I stand here to let you know, yes, Gideon and the nation of Israel were being oppressed. They felt they were caged in, but God still has them in mind. So God has sent me here this morning, irrespective of where you feel like you are caged in, God still cares about you. God still thinks about you. God still has a plan and a good and a wonderful plan for you. And I pray that plan of God shall be fulfilled in the mighty name of Jesus. Number two, because of time, not only does God have plan for you, God cares about imprisoned people. If you fall into this category that you feel like you are imprisoned by any situation or a predicament, God cares about you. What does God feel when he sees imprisoned people? God has emotion, just like we have emotions. God has emotions, but the difference between God and us is that emotion does not move God. What do I mean by this? Yes, you are sick. God feels for your pain, for your agony. But God does not, he's not moved by the pain you are having. God is moved only when you go to the next level of having faith in him and then he steps into the situation. But many times you can be a parent, your child has is sick, is physically sick. You have empathy, you have emotion, it can affect your mood, it can affect your day. God is not moved by that. The only thing that moves God is our faith in him. But in as much as God cares about you, he has emotion. God is drawn to the oppressed. He saw what the Israelites were going through in the hands of the Midianites and he rose up to their situation. And I pray God will rise to your situation this morning. I said God will rise to your situation this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. So God cares about you if you feel like that. How do I know? My Bible tells me in the book of Psalm 9 verse 9. Psalm 9 verse 9. That the Lord is a refuge for the oppressed. A stronghold in times of trouble. Do you feel trouble this morning? God will come to your aid. God will come to your aid. In the mighty name of Jesus. Psalm 146 verse 7. Psalm 146 verse 7. The Bible says he opposed the cause of the oppressed. And he gives food to the hungry. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord lifts up those who loves the righteous. So God cares about you. He cares about you. Look at the manifesto of Jesus. Luke chapter 4 verse 18. The only reason, the main reason why God sent Jesus Christ to this world. Says the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. To, he has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners. For as many are filled prison, the freedom and liberty shall be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. 
So God cares about you. That's why he sent Jesus to send him to this world to give you freedom and recovery of sight for the blind. Whatever opportunity that you've been blinded onto, God will open your eyes of understanding to them. Opportunities are looming all around, but you cannot see them. Today, that veil that covers your eyes, the Almighty God will remove in the mighty name of Jesus. So he gives sight to the blind. He restores the sight of the blind and also to free the oppressed and to bring people to God's favor. And I pray your season of favor has come. I said your favorite season of favor has come. In the mighty name of Jesus. Psalm 116 verse 5. Psalm 116 verse 5. Psalm 116 verse 5. Verse 5. It says the Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of what? Compassion. So God cares about the oppressed. You feel caged in. God cares about you. That should keep, bring an assurance to you. That should rekindle your joy. That should bring the joy of your salvation back to where it needs to be. And I pray that will be your testimony in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord is not intimidated by your bad thinking. Look at Joshua, I mean, uh, Gideon. He had a bad thought. He felt, probably felt that was their lot in life. That they will always be under the oppression of the Midianites and all the Amalekites. But God brought change to him. But you find out that change will never come until his mindset is changed. And that was what God was trying to do through the angel. God had to change his mind from impossibility thinking to that of a possibility thinker. God wants to do something. Don't forget where we started from. As a man thinking in his heart, so is he. Don't let the delay change what comes out of your mouth. Don't let the delay, because it has not happened at the 11th month, change how your passion and your zeal towards the things of God. That was what the devil was able to do to Gideon and the rest of the Israelites. Even the angel called him, thou mighty man. He said, look around, where is the mighty man? Is he talking to somebody else? God still thinks about you. He still thinks about you. Number three, because of time. God sees possibility when impossibility is what you see. God sees possibility when all you see around you is impossibility. When all you can see is your cave limitation. When all you can see is a barrier. Brothers and sisters, I stand here this morning to let you know God sees possibility. Look at what happens in verse 12. All Gideon saw was nothing. He says, when the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Mighty warrior. The one that feels intimidated. God is calling him mighty. You that you feel you'll be childless. God is calling you a joyful mother. You that you feel that you will eke out of life, God is calling you an employer of labor. That is what God sees. God does not see you the way you are. He wants you to change your mindset. God sees possibility. God sees beyond your cave situation. God sees beyond your limitation. So don't accept any limitation that the life puts you in. You were not designed to live life in the cave. So it's time for you to come out of that cave of impossibility. It's time. For you to come out of that cave impossibility. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. Ephesians 3 20. Bible talks about the fact that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you ask or imagine. According to not your own understanding. According to not how you feel. But according to the power that worketh within us. God is able to exceed your expectation. Where do you see yourself? God is able to exceed your expectation. God can change your situation around. And I pray and I believe in this season, in this new dispensation, God will turn your situation around for better. In the mighty name of Jesus. Number four, because of time. Positive changes in your situation begins with positive change in your thinking. Positive change in your situation. It starts with you changing from negative thoughts or negative thinker to a positive thinker. Before God could use Gideon for a whole nation, he had to change his mindset. If you never change your mind, you will not change anything else. It's your mind. Your mind is a battlefield. If the devil wins, then it's all over. But don't let the devil win based on the temporary unfavorable situation. So don't let the battle win the, what comes in your mind. It's very, very key for each and every one of us. So what do you want to see in the field of your life? Start planting what you want to see in the field of your life. What you plant there is what you will reap. You want to joy, start sowing joy. What do you plant in the field of your life? Don't let the devil deceive you to plant negativity in the field of your life. Reflect. 
Look at, let's go back to our scripture, verses 12 to 16. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Pardon me, my Lord, Gideon replied, but if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are all his wonders that our ancestors told us about when they said, did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and given us into the hand of the Midianites. The Lord turned to him and said, go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? Pardon me, my Lord. Look at all the questions. Look at all the questions. All the why, 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 why. Why, why? If, 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 if indeed God exists, why am I still in this situation? If God indeed loves me, why am I still single? If indeed God cares about me, why is that, why has that child not come? Why am I still jobless? Why am I still eking out of life? I'm almost on the verge of being homeless. You're almost on the verge, but you are not still homeless. So in the midst of it, God still cares about you. So you've got to change your, your vocabulary from if, when, why, why to the point where you believe that God did not worry about the Midianites, but he worries about Gideon. He focused on Gideon that I need to change your mindset from this impossibility to that of possibility. If God can change the mind of one man or a one woman, he can change the whole nation. And that was what he did in the life of Gideon. Brothers and sisters, you can be the agent of change in your family. You can be the agent of change in your organization. You can be the agent of change in your ministry. Things are not going well, but God can use you to bring that positive transformation in the whole situation. So you've got to understand that in as much as possible, change your mindset from God cannot to God can. And how do you do that? You start confessing faith, positive faith statements. The scripture is filled with a lot of positive faith confession that you can give. Let me give you some. Number one, change your vocabulary from I'm not alone, I'm connected to the almighty God. One thing the devil will want you to believe is that he has forgotten about you. Is that he has left you alone. Is that your God does not care about you. But the last word Jesus Christ gave before he went to heaven, Matthew 28 verse 20. The old Jesus said, for I am with you always until the very end of the age. Thank you. That is the voice of Jesus. That is the last statement he made before he went to heaven. He says, I'm with you when? Always. I'm with you not only occasionally. I'm with you not only when I feel like. So don't let the devil deceive you that you are alone, that he does not care about you. So every day you wake up, look at yourself in the mirror. You might be in your own apartment by yourself. You might be in a four-bedroom house by yourself. Know fully well you are not alone. That man is coming. You may be in a six-bedroom house, just you and your wife. Know fully well those four children are coming to fill the other rooms. You are not alone. So every morning you wake up, confess to yourself, I'm not alone, God is with me. So confess it positively. I'm not alone, God is with me. The devil wants to feel like you're a loser. But every morning you wake up, tell the devil, I'm not a loser, I am a winner. Every morning, look at yourself in the mirror, brace up. As you shave, as you brush your teeth, say to yourself, I'm not a loser. Yes, it might not have come 11th month, but I'm still a winner. Romans 8, 37 tells you that. Romans 8, verse 37. It says, no, in all these things, we are more than what? Conqueror. Through him who loved us. So you are not a loser. You are a winner. Speak it to yourself. If you walk in the Lord, you will always be a winner. We will always cause all things to work for you in pleasant places. And I pray that will be your testimony in the mighty name of Jesus. Number three, faith confession. Always say to yourself, I'm not a doubter, I'm a believer. Bible says a double-minded person cannot receive anything because they are unstable in their ways. So you speak it to yourself that I'm not a doubter, I'm a believer. Yes, things are still not working well, but I still believe that my Redeemer liveth. I still believe that it's an ongoing, on-time God. 2 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 13. 2 Corinthians 14, 13. He says, it is written, I believe, therefore, I have spoken. With the same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore do what? Speak. Because you believe, you speak. Number four, because of time. Speak to
to yourself, I'm not living in problems of the past. I'm embracing the possibilities of the present and the future. Yes, things may not be rosy. Things may not be the way I designed them in the present, um, in right now. But I'm looking forward to a great future. I'm looking forward to a better future. Speak it and confess it to yourself. Philippians chapter 3 verse 13. Philippians 3 13. It says, brother, that's Paul speaking. I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind. Straining towards what is ahead. Better days are ahead of you. Great and wonderful days are ahead of you. Irrespective of your present unfavorable situation, know fully well every morning you wake up, speak it to yourself. Better days are ahead. These are still the days of humble beginning. These are still the days when God is just starting. You know, when you are starting, when you're preparing to launch a rocket, God is still preparing. And what he will do, he will exceed your expectation. So don't let the devil lie to you. Don't forget where I started from. The battlefield is in your mind. If the devil wins you to have an impossibility mentality, the battle is lost. But you wake up in the morning, you say, I'm not dwelling in the problems of today. I'm not dwelling in the challenges of today. Knowing fully well, I have a wonderful future. Speak to yourself, number five. I'm not asking why. I'm not asking when. All I'm saying is what. What is for the winners? Romans 8.31. Romans 8.31. It says what? What then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who on the face of this earth can be against you? If God is on your case, IRS cannot be on your case. Immigration, whatever they can put them together, they can change law, no matter how many times they want to change it, they cannot stop you from where God plans for you. Your employer may say, well, there is no more job here for you, but that is not the end of your life. They can't stop you from where God has for you. So what? You are the only one that can limit yourself. You are the only one. If you let the devil win the battle in your mind, then he has, you have lost it. So you wake up in the morning and not asking why. But God, why me? Why me? Am I the only one? Why me? Why are things not working? Stop asking why. Say what? Who on the face of this earth can be against you? If God is for you. There is nobody that can stand, stand you. So number six. I'm not magnifying my weaknesses. I'm magnifying God's strength. Gideon saw himself as a weaker one. He says my clan. Which means my tribe is the least. And even when you consider my tribe. I'm even in the back. So don't look at what you don't have. Don't look at your accent. Don't look at your pedigree. Don't look at your background. Look at the strength that God has. Look at the strength. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 9. 2 Corinthians 12 9. But he said to me, My what? Grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. So where you are weak, ask God's strength to come in place. So it's not the weakness that they will see. It's the strength of God that will be magnified in the area of your weakness. And number eight, seven, because of time. I'm not living within cave vision. I'm living with conquering, conquering vision. I'm not living with this limitation vision. I'm living with an overcomer vision. I'm living with an overcomer vision. And to protest this, a story was told in the book of John 11. We all know the story. It's the story of Lazarus, whom the Bible says Jesus loves so much. He was sick, and the sisters, Mary and Martha, sent an SOS message. Jesus, the one you love, is sick, come. And instead of Jesus Christ coming, he's delayed in coming. And before his arrival, the man that he loved had died. And he died, and he's been buried for four days, stinking and messed up. But when Jesus Christ got to the scene, he said something in verse 39 of John 11. The Bible says he looked into heaven, and he prayed, and he said, God, I thank you because you always answer me. And he told the people that were there, he said, take away the stone. Which means something alive is underneath, the stone is limiting it. Brothers and sisters, that hope may seem dead. That hope is still very much alive. All you need to do is roll away the stone. And what is that stone? That negative mentality. He says, roll away the stone. And they roll away the stone. He says, somebody is in that cave that needs to be out. And the Bible says, he called him. He says, Lazarus, come forth. And in the name of Jesus, I'm calling your hope out in the mighty name of Jesus as well. He says, take off the great the, the, the cloth in verse 44. 
Because the man has been set free, but he was still bounded. He said, take away that rubbish that is on him. I'm saying to you again this morning, take off that cloth that turned you bound. You are loose in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says, he who the son sets free is free indeed. Every limitation, every adversary that life has put you, today you will free yourself of them. You will roll away that stone and God will rewrite your story. Your story shall be that of elevation. And look at Gideon, let's, as we round up Judges chapter 8 verse 28. The one that called himself the weakest of all. See what happened, Judges chapter 8 verse 28. Thus the median was what? Subdued. Before who? The Israelites. And did not raise its head again. Whatever is tormenting you. The same way God helped Gideon and the Israelites to subdue them. God will subdue them in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever is holding you bound in the mighty name of Jesus. God will take you above them in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever may be the limitation in your life. Today comes to an end in the mighty name of Jesus. And I speak in the mighty name of Jesus. You are rising up. You will rise again. You will shine again. You will exhibit the goodness of God. The faithfulness of God shall be made manifest in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. What has limited you today marks the end of it. Every medication has an expiring date. In the name of the almighty God, today marks the expiring date of what has oppressed you so far. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will rise and you will shine. And the glory of the almighty God shall be made evidence upon you. In the mighty name of Jesus, if you receive it, can you bow down your head this morning? Bow down your head this morning. Speak unto the almighty God. God does not live in time. You will rise again. Appreciate him for that which he has done in your life. Thank him for where you are now. Because in your weakness, the name of the Almighty God shall be made manifest. You are here this morning. You've never given your heart and life to Jesus. My time is up. But I do not want to live here without this. That is the beginning of the power of God. You have never accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. I want to give you this opportunity. Do you happen to be such an individual? Can you wave to me this morning? Can you wave to me this morning? God will give you the power over sin. Sin will never have dominion over you again. Sin will not rule over you again. We thank you this morning because indeed your children are free we thank you for this new mindset you have given unto them and in their weaknesses your name shall be made glorified in Jesus name we pray